I think the 90s. Great, great decade. Great decade. Great overall. decade. Yeah. Gen X, like they were teens and college kids in the 90s, which I find interesting. I know? find that interesting, yeah. You know? Yeah. It's like, Those, yeah. Imagine being in high school in like 1997. I can't. I, I literally it would be can't. cool. It would have been cool. I feel like it would have been cool. Yeah. Like right when the internet is happening. Yeah. But you don't know how to use it. It's you don't like, know how to use it. Yeah. No one has a computer. <laughs> yeah. It's like an electric car right now. So yeah. Like, <laughs> what is the real power of this thing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Imagine telling someone that you had an AOL account was being like someone in now in or someone in like 2018 saying they had yeah. Bitcoin. Yeah. It's like, okay. What do you. So wait, you just like get mail, but it's not like real yeah. physical mail. Yeah. I think, yeah. And you cr- get it from anyone. That's weird. <laughs> why would you invest time and money in? <laughs> why not just like send someone a letter? Yeah. Why, yeah, why would you make it so complicated? Yeah. What's the what's the need to wait 15 minutes just for it to start up? Yeah. It's very I I love watching the old clips of people like shitting on the internet like when it first started oh, yeah. or like people just not understanding stuff that's so common like Bryant Gummel being like what's email? What is email? It's got the it's got the A that like wraps around. What's what's what's, <laughs> what's that? What's up with this thing? Yeah. I don't know, it just feels, just, just looks weird. Yeah. Um, li- like symbols were like new. That's funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 30 years ago. <laughs> well, I remember when the, when like the pound sign started getting used for hashtag and like now that's, yeah. now that symbol is synonymous with hashtag. I remember when it got used for hashtag because it was like, that was how you tag something. So like. Right. Yeah. But no, I just remember being, but I remember seeing that and being like, oh, so it's like pa- use the pound sign. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's called a hashtag. Why is it called a hashtag? Yeah. <laughs> Who came up with that? Were they smoking hash? Who came <laughs> up with it? Those crazy kids? Those knuckleheads? Oh, boy. Oh, boy, yeah. So how about those Knicks, dude? How about those Knicks? Yeah. How about them? How about them? Let me tell you something. Let me talk to you. <laughs> um, I was watching the game here last night, and it's just... God, it's, they just don't make it easy. I would say it's a rough ride, man. It's a rough ride. It's a rough ride. I, rough uh, riders were, or uh, yeah. yeah, this is for my dogs. Yeah. Uh, this <laughs> they, is what he was talking they about. Knew they were inspired by the New York Knickerbockers. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, man. I yeah, I pr- I watched most of the game last night. I I was watching a, a television program, which I was telling you uh, a little bit about the show Baby Reindeer. Yeah, you were. I was finishing a very upsetting episode. Um, for anyone who watches the show, it was episode four. I hear it's also the most watched TV it's series. Number one show on Netflix right number now. Number one show on Netflix, Baby uh, which Reindeer. Which kind of means it's like the biggest show. It's probably the most popular show of the world right now. Probably. If it's in America. and it's In most, America, yeah. yeah. America and the UK. America and the UK, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I was finishing that episode, and so I missed the first five minutes of the... I missed the first half of the first quarter. Mm. Um, so I only saw the tail end of the first quarter, which for the most part was great. Um, yeah. And then I saw probably... Not probably. Definitely the worst second quarter of basketball I've ever seen a team that I care about play. Um, it was tough. And then, yeah, it was really upsetting. Very, I was just like, I think I, this isn't looking good. Yeah. I wasn't like, oh, they're definitely going to lose this game. Uh, like some people on a certain TNT crew that I love was talking about. Um, mm. But yeah, and then the third quarter and fourth quarter was just like, it was just so, it was just so back and forth. Yeah. And like, but then also, like, in the third quarter, like, the Knicks started coming back, and I was like, wait, are they still, they're still, like, making this a game? It was a fight, man. It was a fight. It, it was, was a dog little, fight. Yeah. Um, shout out my dog, Jalen Brunson, for just doing what he does, just put the team on his fucking back. He he did the thing, man. He, he did the thing. He did all the things, to yeah. be honest with you. He's just fearless, too. He's just, like, he's fearless, and he's just, like, you don't see him, like, ever lose his shit, really. Yeah, it seems like, also, nobody really realized that he was... Like he went to Villanova, and like he was yeah. back in Philly, so right he had a reason. He's to very ball comfortable out. in yeah. playing in Philadelphia. <laughs> I mean, he's probably not thrilled that the people that were cheering for him ten years ago are now like wishing death upon him. Yeah, but you know, it's what it is. Um, he was he was also clearly he talked in the post game. He was like, I was looking at our championship banners. Yeah, as I was playing. Um, so that. Probably made him feel good. Oh, dude, he played in that arena. In he college. played in that arena. Like, yeah, that was his home. Yeah, <laughs> he's very comfortable there. Not just him, Divincenzo, Josh, Josh Hart. Hart. Yeah, um, you know, it was like a little home homecoming. Um, but no, it was very stressful. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Sixers played. 
pretty unbelievably, specific, specifically Joel Embiid and um, yeah. probably my most hated college player that I watched, uh, mm-hmm. Buddy Heald. Uh, just oh, come out of, yeah. I mean, I was, you know, happy for him that he was getting his moment, but of course it was at my Yo. team's expense, which yeah. was just very, uh, it was very triggering as a West Virginia fan, reminded of the stuff that he was doing in Oklahoma. Dude just popped out like a fucking copperhead snake, man. Just fucking just camouflaged and five for seven from three in the second quarter. Yeah, he, scored two, he had two 17. points. He scored two points in the whole series before game six, and then he had 17 points in the first half. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Which he got all of in <laughs> second quarter. Yeah. It was nuts. It was insane. Um, yeah, so it was very exciting. Um, I did at one point get so upset, I slapped my knee and my hand... Uh, Fo- if I had did a follow through on my knee and then slapped my own self in the testicles. Womp, womp, womp. Uh, which was just very unfortunate um, for oh everybody boy. involved. Um, yeah, so it wasn't looking good. And then we were end- able to pull out a victory uh, in Philly, close it out in Philly, which was very, was very satisfying as someone who generally hates the- all Philly sports teams. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just what it is being a New York sports fan. Uh, so that Talk was very satisfying. Um, mm. I know you, you had a very different experience for me because you were actually at the game. I was with the- your girlfriend, who is a massive Philly sports fan. She is all of those things. Uh, we were there together. It was a love great- you, Tina. Yes. <laughs> As do I. It's a, <laughs> it was a great experience. Um, I, I don't know, dude. Like, I don't have an NBA team, like a favorite NBA team. Uh, I kind of bounce around just like whatever player I like at the time. Yeah. It's kind of the team I like. There was um, a minute where you were saying that you were thinking about being a Lakers fan. I did like the Lakers a lot when um, LeBron went there. <coughs> and then I liked them even more when, you know, Kobe kind of passed on. Like, that was even more reason to be sure. like, oh, yeah. Like, I'm just claiming this team out of, you know. His, yeah. his legend, because I don't really have a favorite team. Like, never really have, like, pledged allegiance to any basketball team. Yeah. Um, never fucked with the Wizards? Ne- I, I tried to. I never got into them. Um, like, the like OG Wizards, like, with the blue fucking Oh, movies, yeah. Like yeah, that, Gilbert Arenas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, that's those were the Wizards, like, MJ. Jordan 2.0. Yeah. That that Wizards was the Wizards. I was like, uh, this is, like, my home, my local home team. Yeah. Um, but I never liked the wizard. <laughs> it's like, at yeah, all. I don't blame you. <laughs> so it was kind of, that's what, like, it, that's what their fan base looked like. Yeah. Was that they just, they were just there for Michael <laughs> and then Gilbert yeah. Arenas was like a nice touch. Yeah. I liked Gilbert Arenas and just the stories of Gilbert Arenas were crazy, but then that He's was wild. That was a wild man. Dude, just the craziest, crazy shit. Yeah. And that was when I realized like, okay, I, I don't have a team. I just like players. Yeah. So, Fair. Yeah, I'm a free agent uh, for anybody shopping for a fan yeah, uh, in the um, NBA market. Um, yeah, well, uh, you know, as as you had told me, uh, you had put in an application to be a Knicks fan, which uh, you then re- uh, receded pre-Game 6. I did, I did. Uh, which I said, okay, you can do that. <laughs> Just know that um, you're not eligible to reapply until the 25-26 season. Which is fair. Um, that's just how it goes. That 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 is totally understandable. Um I'll still I, I may, you know, we're, we'll talk in the off season. Maybe open to twenty four, twenty five season, but d- certainly not through the rest of the playoffs. Let's just say I'm rooting for the Knicks to get out of the East. Um, Thank you for the as, as am I. of this playoffs. That'd be really nice if we got to go to the NBA Finals. It would be. Uh, I also just like seeing the Garden like filled, like the Staples Center, because um, the Garden is definitely the more historic place if I'm being completely honest with you. Yeah, like, no, it is. It's like, been around, yeah, it's been around it has, longer. It's And, you know, it's because it's so, like, tight and compact and, you know, it's very exciting right now. I'm also a Rangers fan for those who uh, who don't know. So, yeah. uh, you know, obviously I was born in 1994, so I wasn't uh, really conscious and I wasn't uh, alive for most of it. Um, These so, things are true. Yeah. So, you know, that great Knicks and Rangers spring summer of 94 i was not present for at least not consciously um you don't say yeah um yeah it's crazy that at two months old i don't remember uh the stanley cup or the nba finals that year but, i appreciate you making that crystal clear to everybody yeah I could, couldn't can't emphasize it enough uh so i don't remember it i guys i'm serious i don't i wasn't drunk i was i was a baby i was a little, i didn't even know who i was but i was here but i was here um there's a photo of me somewhere with the with the <laughs> hand on my Stanley with my hand on the Stanley Cup. 
after it's we just won the it. hand. Yeah, it's like not your body. No, not my body. My dad just like <laughs> held out my little arm, and I was just, I was just like, what am I? What am I touching? Um, so it's very exciting that thirty years later that this is all happening, and I just, you know, the Knicks are like the one thing where it's like if the Knicks are doing well, I just feel like the whole city is doing well. Yeah. Um, so it's very exciting that the Knicks are doing well and, you know, very excited about the Rangers as well. We swept and we're starting the next, next round against Carolina. Um, except, uh, our, our buddy John Scafidi at at war came out with a nice, cool, uh, like Knicks logo print of his that's stuff. The, that's the other reason. So next episode I'll be wearing that. Yeah. Shout out at war. Yeah. Appreciate you guys and all Absolutely. the fits you supply us with. Shout out groom guys for the hat. Shout out groom this guys. Is, yeah. This is a New York Knicks colorway hat, which I also enjoy. The yes. Colorway. It's fucking fire. It is. You cannot say that the blue and orange is dope. And yeah. the other part to it is New York fans are fucking ruthless, dude. Like, yeah. like people in New York are ruthless. So, like, yeah, no, we are. Them trash talking is like the most, it's the most obnoxious thing God has ever put on this planet. Well, because like New Yorkers are just such natural born like shit talkers to each other yeah and to like, like it, that's how we express love yeah and it's so fast it's so fast <laughs> dude it's like <laughs> that's the thing people don't understand it's just like yo slow like even <laughs> someone who grew up in brooklyn i'm just like yo you guys gotta slow down <laughs> y'all hit me with a lot of shit and most of it's funny but like, yeah most of it's i want to hear all of it <laughs> yeah like you walk into a if you walk into a room where everyone is like from brooklyn or queens or something there's oh yeah, what the fuck you doing? Yeah, looking at my, 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 my. it's just like <laughs> And like everybody is amplified, like their yeah. voice projects in a way where you can hear them over the fucking subway that's going right by you. Yeah, it's and then crazy. everyone, and then everyone tries having like the loudest laugh. Yeah, and then it's just like it's yeah, it's just yeah. it's very intense. It's very intense. So very we're loud. we're like that with people that we actually like, right? If you give us a space and an actual legit reason to shit talk people <laughs> that we despise, oh, forget about it. <laughs> I don't care about Fuck this person. About it. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck, Fuck you. you. Fuck your family. <laughs> Fuck your city. Fuck your zip code. Fuck your team. And most of all, fuck your life. <laughs> Bing bong. This is a New York Knicks fan. Uh, through and through. It's it's beautiful. And that's but that's that's what I like about Knicks fans specifically. Not just New York fans. Because like, also we're fucking miserable yeah. for most of the time. Let's just make it very clear. This is the first time in like years that we've been this excited. That's why you have to like make that's why it's fun. You gotta make it worth our while. Yeah. yeah. So that's why it's like okay. Because it's gonna be gone tomorrow. Right. So like <laughs> whenever tomorrow comes. Which is why I find it funny when people are like, yo, I can't imagine like the Jets, like they can't do shit. Just um, I feel like people only say that because they can't imagine Jets fans actually experiencing any sort of euphoria. No. <laughs> like, that just no. isn't going to happen. It, can, and, it can't. And, and most people's, like, rational minds. But there's always this year. There's always there's this year. There's always next year. Yeah. And I'm a Jets fan, and that's all I'm going to say. But, yeah, dude, like... There's misery there. There's suffering. There's pain. Just endure the suffering. That's what the JET stands for. Yeah. And that's basically what I've dealt with. And I think METS uh, stands for must endure the suffering. Must endure the suffering. J- fucking Joe shed his shirt for the second straight game in a row watching it on the couch. Like, it's, yeah. yeah. He's sitting here watching a game that he knows <laughs> isn't going to end well and is probably going to get worse the more he watches it. it but was, he's like, I'm not going anywhere. It was eight to three at the top of the fifth. Nine. Nine. Nine to three. Top of the fifth. You can't make this up, ladies and gentlemen. No. <laughs> it's okay. I'm also a national fan. Yeah. So. But speaking of colorways, blue and orange, you know? Blue and orange, yeah. So, But that's the thing, too, is like, I need to find it a best. It builds character. It does build character. And that's why I want to reapply. Because I think, and I'm sorry, Christina, I love you, but I also think that since I'm a fucking Jets fan, and like I'm a legit Jets fan, like I'll you yeah, know, oh yeah, yeah, I'm legit. You're legit. Also very legit. Also like because people who are Jets fans really don't have a choice because they're born into it. You chose. You no, I you chose. looked at 32 teams and you went <laughs> and you looked at the kid fucking picking his nose and you were like that that guy. The, the, He's got potential. <laughs> That's a defensive mind, if I ever saw one. He's an underdog. Everybody thinks the Big Brother's a really good one. Nope. <laughs> I believe in this yeah. kid. You just you picked the kid eating his third Uncrustable of the day, and you were like, that that guy. That guy. Yeah. He's going to shut the weight. Smelling his feet. <laughs> He's going to be a superstar. He's going to be a superstar. Trust me. I don't know when or how. But. 
<laughs> could be could be centuries. Yeah. <laughs> so long as the sport's going on, they got a shot. Yeah. So I mean, the <laughs> fact that you actively chose to be a Jets fan, uh, I think, makes you maybe the most Jets fan of all time. And I think. <laughs> Thank you. I yeah. appreciate it. And you guys are on to round two. Uh, on to round two against the Indiana Pacers. It truly is 1994. I said yeah. this already. Um, granted, I I don't think slash hope that the Pacers don't have a Reggie Miller on their team that I'm aware of. They don't. They don't. Um, he is. So, he's he's in the booth though. He'll he'll be there calling the games. That's fine. As long as he's as long as he's not checking in, uh, <laughs> shooting threes from everywhere. Um, I'm fine. He's throwing it's, spike the choke sign. Yeah. Um. You know. That's that's fine. Um, oh boy. So, so yeah. So you know, if you want to join sometime next year, you're more than welcome to. Just know there's going to be some dark days. I, I I'm I'm well equipped for those, um, given my past team selection history. So I'm uh I'm ready, buddy. I'm ready. And um, with that being said, we uh are taking it light. Yeah. Uh, this is we, not vodka. Yeah. We we don't want to pop bottles prematurely. For our beloved Knicks. Um, no. We want to take time. You don't want to cheers this because, as my Irish friend tells me, it's bad luck. It is. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're drinking water. Cups of water. Nothing wrong with it. Because this guy's going sober. For now. For now. Because he needs to. Yeah. And he wants to. And, and I have a, to. And, he's a, and he has to. And he's yeah. a man. And he's 30. And I'm 49. <laughs> Sorry, the podcast just took over my spirit. Uh, <laughs> 49. Yes, I'm, I'm 30. Um, yeah, we're drinking water. It's good for you. Drink, drink some water. Yeah, drink more water. Drink Seriously. water. Drink. Get get some good night's sleep. You guys should definitely Stretch. drink more water. Yeah. Like, you should let, not sip it either. Like, drink more water. Yeah. It's at least, at least 64 ounces. Yeah, it's supposed to be like half your body weight in ounces is how much water you're supposed to drink a day. Oh, really? Yeah. So if you if you if you account for oh I drink way more than that there you go you're good great but you're also like living in New York you walk around a lot so yeah. you're also pumping up the cardio vascular system it's true while also boosting the respiratory system yeah. and I try to exercise you know yeah and you're hydrated yeah and I'm a fish it- <laughs> so there's that as well it's a triple threat for most people yeah. it's a quadruple threat it's a quad threat <laughs> it's a quad threat for the salmon yeah. <laughs> my quad careful don't hit yourself in the nuts there buddy yeah Ooh. oh baby <laughs> um but with that yeah. being said we talked we brought up the knicks because i wanted to talk about a movie uh because uh i've been busy so i have not been able to watch it yeah recently um but we have been watching basketball we have been watching playoff basketball we have been watching playoff basketball it yeah. is the start of the playoffs as well yeah um and a movie that we both really much or we really much <laughs> we very much enjoyed uh was a spike lee film that was done in the nineties, and uh, yeah, ninety eight. Yeah, featured a or an NBA All Star and one of the most beloved actors uh, in cinema, and one Denzel Washington. Yeah, and that film is he got game. He got game. Uh, was it nine? It was ninety eight that came out. Ninety eight. Yeah, that's wild. I always feel like it was like ninety six or like before ninety, like ninety six or before. But <clears throat> no, because uh, he was still at UConn. I was going to say that's when I remember like Ray Allen was at UConn in 96. And I was like, oh, that's yeah. that's why he, that movie didn't come out then because he was still there. He would have had to get paid. Yeah. Him. And I imagine, you know, because it came out in 98, they were probably filming it in 97. Right. Because he came out. They're probably writing it. You know, Spike was probably writing it in 96. Knowing Spike being the basketball fan that he is, obviously. 96, there was a huge, uh, you know, there's a big East tournament and there was a big championship game between UConn and Georgetown, which was mm. uh, led by Georgetown had Allen Iverson on it. and Ray Allen was on UConn. Oh, 96. Yeah. Oh, so, wow. Okay. So That's I don't really fact. Keep going. Yeah. So I don't nice. really know what the casting process was like, but I imagine Spike was maybe watching that game. And, you know, that came that game came down to the wire and Ray Allen uh, hit like the game winning shot. And oh, uh, wow. I bet I wouldn't be surprised if uh, that sparked an interest in Spike of being like, oh, I wonder if uh, I wonder if we can get this guy in, in our movie. Bro, that's crazy. Like, I think of myself as the more sports buff of us. And the fact that I did not know any of that information and you just shed light. Well, on see, it. like I know like I know stats and dates, mm-hmm. 
you actually like understand the game in a way of like <laughs> you could possibly coach it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I do understand like the elements and mechanics of the game and all that stuff. But like as far as like statistical facts and like historic events. Oh, like, yeah. It's just I'm a, I'm a steel yeah, trap. Like yeah. I remember stuff that I actually watched, but like shit that I didn't or if it was like a star player's like kind of ascension to getting to the league or, mm-hmm. you know, that big moment in college that's like historic. Couldn't fucking tell you. Um, I could tell you where they went to school, but like the moments and shit. Yeah. You got me. Um, but yeah, he got game was <clears throat> it's yeah, it's I think it's probably my favorite basketball movie. Mm. Maybe. Coach Carter's up there. Yeah. But I think he have got you seen Hoosiers? I have seen Hoosiers. It was a good movie. It yeah. wasn't to me it wasn't better than Coach Carter or um or he got game only because I like related to those stories a little bit better. Sure. The cool thing about he got game though was like in the South, like it was kind of more like the Coach Carter vibe, like big gymnasium, you know, like bigger school with you know, public school and shit. Yeah. Um whereas he got game was like in it's a very New York. Movie. Yeah, it's very New York. It's very Brooklyn. It's very like yeah, you know, because also like street bat, like street basketball is like such a <clears throat> is such a big thing in the city, and like yeah, you know, it was like it still is like you know whether you're in Harlem or you're in the West Village, like at the Cages or like Rucker Park. Yeah, you know, it's like if you want to test yourself, like show up to the court on Saturday, and you know, let's yeah. see what you got. Right. Like that's, you know, because anyone, you know, because it's kind of the thinking is like, all right, yeah, if you're in like a gym playing high school ball or whatever, like you're under the confines of whatever the rules, whatever the rules are like, you know, that's one thing. But like come out here where we're calling the fouls. Right. You know? Yeah. It's a real, yeah, real kind of rite of passage. And when you when you look at it from the perspective of New York is like the mecca of everything kind of like urban culture and like basketball definitely fits in that and very much so in respects to kind of how it's evolved. And I love what Spike Lee does with this movie and making the, like the protagonist such like a praised and like glorified character and in such a real way, like that. His name is Jesus. Exactly. that, That exactly submits my point. Like, the way he presents it, it's like, yo, this dude is like Jesus. He is the Messiah. Everybody sees him. He's coming to save the day. He's coming yeah. to save. He's here to save the neighborhood, his family, his community. Like people are going to be known because they came from where this kid came from and they know him. Like yeah. He's going to take care of all of us. Right. And just the way he explains how, you know, kids like that are exploited in their own community by the people who want to see them succeed the most and oh, like yeah. the most blatant, just, you know, irresponsible way. And it's like a cycle. It, it really just illuminates another way of how it feels to be black in America. But, but with it being like in a centralized location, like it, with it being in New York, like in an area where it's like very condensed and like the only way out of it is by playing basketball. By yeah. like being like you have to be the best. You gotta be this fucking good if you want to be like I got I, like I got the city on my back. Like Jalen Brunson, like that nigga's Jesus Shuttlesworth, basically <laughs> right uh, now. Right now, yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's what I mean. It's like how the whole city is like behind Jalen Brunson. How they were behind Patrick Ewing. Like just imagine if all of New York is like that for you, and you're a high school basketball player. Like that's how Spike puts it out there um and yeah like i said i related to it because i was a young black man when i first saw it and it was yeah. it's in a lot of Im- imagery and it's pretty jarring and you kind of are like it's rough around the edges yeah yeah for sure um and then it also and also just sorry to cut you oh, off but good. like that's one of the first roles that i can think of for denzel where he's like not a very likable guy yeah it yeah, he's not a villain, but he definitely He's not a villain, but like he's got he's got some flaws. And I mean, obviously, you know, obviously, you know, he's coming out of being incarcerated and he's like he's trying to get his life back in order and like he's trying to reunite with a son who's having all this success that you know, son wants absolutely nothing to do with because as far as he's concerned, 
he hasn't done anything to contribute to his success, but in a way he kind of has because because of the shit that happened to him as a kid, he's used that as fuel to change his life and like to use the God given talents that he's been given, which is being an incredible basketball player to, you know, change his life and make his life better. Yeah. And no. then, you know, and then that's going to plan. And then all of a sudden his dad comes back into his, into his life and comes into the picture and just, yeah. Starts fucking everything up. So as you can clearly see, it's not just about basketball. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's about that deeper layer of, you know, living that reality of, not only is everybody like counting on you to make it out and be the representative of everybody, but like are the superhero for everybody. You also have this very just incredibly well told father son relationship yeah. between Ray Allen and Denzel's character that is honestly, bro, it's probably the most honest representation of like, you know, a father coming out of prison to be involved in their son's life after doing something that is very traumatizing to their child. And like, yeah, that's the thing. The child sees what happened. Exactly. And like, and you have to reconcile with the fact of, I can understand that this person, look, why my child wouldn't forgive me. I, I don't know if I could forgive myself. Yeah. But then you look at the moral complexity of it all. And it's just like, you would forgive yourself. And if your child did it, you would forgive them. So you're trying to, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt that they'll forgive you and you're willing to do anything to prove that. And yeah, like this movie just does a really good job of tying it all back together and how it ends, um, what the ultimate, you know, resolution is and solution is of the, yeah, of the situation that's at hand. It's a very classic spike ending too. Yeah, very much. It's, it's a lot of classic spike like montages Stuff. in yeah. it. Yeah. Just like the montage is really, I mean, well, yeah, the montages in it are great. Yeah. Um, the basketball game at the end of the movie between G- between Denzel and Ray Allen, who, again, you know, aside from being an incredible basketball player, I thought Ray Allen was incredible in the movie as from an acting perspective. It's pretty wild to watch that movie. Like, he genuinely could have, like, had a career, I think, as an actor and would have been pretty, <laughs> yeah. would have been pretty solid. You watch that movie and you say, is this dude a real actor or, like, is he a basketball player? Like, he gave one, like you said, one of the best performances from any professional athlete I've seen. Yeah. Like, that's acting. Yeah, and I think that's a testament to just how good of a director Spike is. Yes, and and that Um, could be totally what it is. It's just like Spike knew what the vision and angle of this movie was and why he casted him for it. Yeah. Um, And so, yeah, you know, it's... it's, And Denzel has one of the great afros. Yeah, Denzel's afro is great in it. Yeah, it's Uh, just it's so good. Yeah, Denzel... And, like, it... It is really one of Denzel's kind of like most underrated roles. Oh, absolutely! Like very yeah. overlooked. I feel like um, yeah, very overlooked because because again, he's done such he's done he has such an incredible body of work and he's done so much great stuff with Spike. Right. Yeah. Um, that you kind of think about this one, and you're like, oh yeah, they did do that one together. Like yeah, that's, yeah. You hmm. kind of yeah, you do kind of forget about or like maybe not forget about it, but it's not the first. It's not the first or second movie you think of when yeah. you think of Denzel and and Spike doing something. Yeah. Um, yeah, it might not even be in the top ten like movies you name when you think of Denzel Washington performances. That's 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 probably that's probably true. Yeah, imagine, but he's yeah. you know he's Denzel, so he's great. Um, yeah, the movie, yeah, the movie's great. The movie's awesome. Uh, is lot. it on Max? Is it any? Is it streamable anywhere? I want to say it probably is. Yeah. Um, so if you can find it, definitely check it out. I know it's definitely available on something, whether you can rent it or yeah, you know it's whatever. Certainly is available somewhere. It's definitely yeah. it's streamable. A great watch. Yeah, it's a great watch. Um. Like I said, a really good, just a really good, a really good look into like a, a black household kind of where, you know, mm-hmm. the family's trying to keep it together um, in, a, in, in a very unique way. Um, yeah. So highly encourage everybody to check it out. Um, I had an idea about doing this draft, a pickup, pickup. Yeah, game. I was. Yeah, I was. I was intrigued when you uh, when you brought this up. Yeah. So I came up with this idea of we could do this draft. Of like you're doing a pickup game of five players, okay, for your pickup basketball game at a street park or whatever, okay, basketball park, and uh, so we get we we we're coaching, Let's think we're about coaching, it. so okay. we're captains, but we're coaching. Got it. So we got five people that we get to pick up. Oh, we're picking five. Yeah. So, oh, okay. So just imagine there's a sea of actors who've worked from 2020 or I'm sorry 2014 to now. So within the last decade, they had to have had. To have done some work, 
Okay. Uh, so they can't, like, if they haven't worked since 2014 and still haven't done anything currently, they do not qualify. What if, so, okay, so what if they were working pre-2014 and have continued to work? That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That, yeah, yeah, it's, that's fine. I'm saying, okay. I'm saying if they just either have taken a hiatus or have retired since 2014. I see. They don't qualify. I got you. Okay. Um, so just the, within the last decade, there's a little exclusionary period there for certain people if they okay. haven't worked. Um, so with that being said, uh, it'll be like a, like I said, just like a pickup game. So you go first, I go next, you go next, then we just go like that. Okay. And then we'll figure out who has the better team. <laughs> okay. If, if either one of us do. Okay. Um, and I think we can both rattle off five actor names without picking the same ones. Yeah, I, I think, think so. so. Yeah. And and just to be clear, because obviously there have been some people who have left sports and become actors or who have also acted as well as sports. You're talking about people who are primarily just actors who we think would be good pickup basketball players. <laughs> no, they are they are just actors. They're just actors. Who right. we are just picking yes. as part of our acting team to go against. So, like, I'm picking a team of actors to go against your team of actors, and then we're going to have them do an acting battle or whatever. And just like, Oh, so they're, so they're not playing basketball. They're not <laughs> playing basketball. Okay, that cha- I'm not going to lie. That changes a lot. No, 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 no. It's just like... i have been building my team around that <laughs> idea that they would be playing basketball. No. Okay. All right. All right. That's fine. <laughs> that would have been funny here. <laughs> that would, I had some really funny picks. Let's just say at one point I thought about drafting Sydney Sweeney only due to the fact that I think she would distract the other team with her hotness. We're not picking a Space Jam team. Okay. All right, that's fine. All right. <laughs> that's funny. That is yeah. that's really funny. Okay. So, it's just just you, let's just say let's just say it's 1995. We're picking our favorite fucking actors. Okay. You go first. Uh Bruce Willis is on my team. Okay. Chris Walken's on my team. Okay. All right, all right, all right. I got you. I got you. I got you. Okay. Oh, uh, so yeah. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> that's really funny. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, uh I'll go first. Okay. Uh, and I'll start with, I'm taking Denzel. Great. Uh, I'm going with uh, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. I'm taking Sam Jackson. Okay. Uh, I'm taking Brad Pitt. Ooh, I'm taking Leonardo DiCaprio. Mm. I'm taking... Taking Jamie Foxx. <laughs> You're taking Jamie Foxx? Yeah. I'm taking Jim Carrey. Damn. Uh, all right. Uh, I'm taking Ryan Gosling. Taking Ryan Gosling. Uh, I am taking... Oof. It's your last pick. It is my last pick. Taking Ryan Gosling. God damn it. I am taking... Oof. Have you said Robert De Niro? No. I'm taking Al Pacino. Okay. <laughs> uh, hmm. I'm taking. Fuck! I guess I gotta take Robert De Niro. I was say I don't know anybody else who's better. Yeah, uh, I, 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 there isn't. No. That dude's got longevity. He's still working. He's still working. He's still yelling at people on set. He's still, I don't know if you saw that video. He's still producing children. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, he's, so he's got to he's got to work. <laughs> he's got endurance. Yeah. <laughs> Thing even surprises him. I have not seen that video though. Uh, he was on set, and I guess there were people like uh, I guess there were people you know civilians or whatever like hoarding around the set, and he was I guess it was delaying them shooting, and he just just like we're trying to work. Like, you got to stay behind the barricade. I understand. I appreciate it. But we're trying to work here. <laughs> He's getting very upset. <laughs> and Jesse Plemons is right behind him, just like, <laughs> just like, didn't know what to do. Just like, it's all right, Bob. It's all right. Yeah. Um, He's, he, I think he feels a clock, maybe. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. Daylight's wasting. I got, we we got to get this shot. It wasn't time. <laughs> um. Yeah. All right. So yeah, that's that's my last pick, De Niro. All right. Cool. Now here's your curveball. 
Ladies. Okay. You ready? Yeah. You go first. <laughs> Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep. Uh, Kate Winslet. Kate Blanchett. You fuck. <laughs> uh, uh, who am I taking? Edie Falco. Very nice. Francis McDormand. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg, god damn it. Viola Davis. <laughs> That's... <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg's got an Academy Award, okay? So does Viola Davis. <laughs> but don't look at me like Viola Davis is better than Whoopi Goldberg. She, I know she is better, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I didn't say anything, guys. <laughs> she did. Viola's, resu- <laughs> Viola's resume says it all. Anyway, I love you both. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll just start <laughs> naming ridiculous names. Uh, Regina Hall. Julianne Moore. Julianne Moore. Oh, that's good. I think it's five. Is that five? That's your five? Meryl Streep. Franz McDormand. Who did I pick before Franz McDormand? Mm. Oh, Franz McDormand, Kate Blanchett, Meryl Streep, Kate Blanchett, Franz McDormand, Viola Davis, Julianne Moore. That's, I mean, that's a fucking. It's a pretty solid. That's a squad. dream team. It's a pretty solid squad. Pretty solid squad. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. Emma Stone. Great. Great. Reigning champion Oscar winner. Yeah, I, I had to, I had to get my points in somewhere. Okay. Um. Yeah. Solid. 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 Do we want to do five more for our bench? Yeah. It could be anything. Anything. Yeah. yeah. He, him, they, them. Doesn't matter. Oh, okay. So so five he, him, so they. five bench that could be it, it could be any any combo of the genders. Correct. Okay. Doesn't matter what you what you want. Okay. Um well you had you had the first pick, so if you want to pick first. For our bench. So these people cannot have been named yet, right? Uh, correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, going from a bench, Eddie Murphy. Okay. Um, so actually, so my first bench pick would have been on my actual play basketball team, uh, Adam Sandler. Oh, that's good. <laughs> would have been on my play basketball team. <laughs> I'm not picking this guy, but do you know who I thought of as who was going to be my first pick of like if they had to play basketball? Who? Yaya Abdul Mateen the second. Oh wow! Oh, that's that would have been a good basketball pick. Just because he's fucking huge, yeah. And I just feel like he would bitch oh, anyone around on the basketball court. He would do that. Yeah, he would. He's definitely. a very good actor too. Yeah, he is. He's very good. Um, do, 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 do. who am I going with? Who did I say? Uh, uh who was? Oh, who, Eddie Murphy was my. Your first Eddie pick. Murphy was your um your, your that pick. <laughs> Oh boy, uh, Adam Driver. Ooh, good pick. Mm. Um, Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe, nice. Um, you know what? People are gonna appreciate this pick, and they should. <laughs> Will Ferrell. Mm. Very good. Yeah, it's a very good pick. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna pick a lady. A leading lady. Ah, <laughs> ah! Uh, uh, no, not her. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, you know, uh, Nicole Kidman. Oh. Solid choice. I hate the AMC ads. You know, you know, it. you know it. Oh, good. oh, huge! By the way, uh, oh. I know you haven't seen Challengers yet, and we'll talk about it uh, hopefully in the next episode. Okay. Raucous applause for Nicole at at the challenge. Oh, really? Raucous. Raucous. Yeah, definitely the over. Deafening. Yeah. Wow. Huh. That's interesting. It was interesting. Wow. Well, also Challengers is definitely like a big Nicole crowd. I, I could say. see that. Like Nicole, you know, that whole like Nicole's mommy thing. You yeah. Know? I can yeah. see that. I can see that. Yeah. yeah. Um, somebody who I think deserves a lot more credit than what they get. Uh, one, Matt Damon. Excellent pick. Yeah. And I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with someone who also I don't think gets as much recognition as they should get, even though I think in the last few years they've been getting it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to go with Mr. Sam Rockwell. Sam. 
Sammy Boy. Rockwell. Rockwell. <laughs> great guy. Great guy. Great, great dancer. Great dancer. Got all the moves. All the hips. All the moves. All all the great things. All right. I think we got one more pick each. Yeah, we got one more. Um, I, I'm I'm looking for a lady here. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and say it. She's my queen. Angela Bassett. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to go... I'm also going to round up with a lady. Uh, another, I think, very underappreciated lady. And uh, a former co-star of Sam Rockwell's. Ooh. Michelle Williams. Nice. Nice. I think she's one of the best character actors out there. She's She is great. She's really good. I'm yeah. glad you picked her. Me too. She deserves that recognition. She does. <laughs> From you. You're welcome, Michelle. <laughs> Big fan. Huge fan. Huge. Fucking huge. Um, that's all I got. Great. Nice. That was fun. That was fun. Should Good. we do should we do this again uh when baseball season's in full swing? <laughs> <laughs> Fantasy baseball draft full of just, just actors. Actors and directors. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's that's oh, see so okay, so question. Who would be your basketball coach? Who would be my basketball coach? Can the, they be a director? Yeah, okay. they're they're a director. Okay. My coach would be Ooh. Tarantino. I feel like that was too easy, though. Yeah, I mean, because mine's Marty. Yeah. So, what's a better question? What's a better question? Who would um, be there? Who would be there? Uh, who's the who, owner? Who's the owner? <laughs> uh, and this could be this could be uh, your studio or network that you would pick. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm a Warner Brothers guy. Are you? Yeah. So that's what? Uh, is, is that Paramount? Nope. Paramount's no. Paramount. Paramount's Paramount. Okay. Um, I'm not a Paramount guy. Uh, nor am I. Param- a- Paramount's not a Paramount guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paramount is looking for someone to be a Paramount guy. <laughs> also not really a uh, fucking. Oh, Warner Brothers HBO. Yeah. Okay. There's a there's another one that's very that's very successful that you could go with. Uh, yeah. Um And I and I, I I would only choose it because yes, A24. And it would be Oh, yeah, okay. It would be I thought you were going to say Universal, but yeah, A24. No, okay. It would be A24. Um and that's only because I like that they're in New York. That's fair. That's they they would they would they would be my owner. We, we're bringing it back east, baby. We're bringing it home. Yeah, and honestly, they would probably not even go by the term owner. It'd probably go by governor. Governor, yeah. See, that's <laughs> that's why we do business. <laughs> nice. Solid. Nice. That was fun. That yeah. was a good idea. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. we should we do sh- it again. We should do it again. We should Absolutely. definitely do it again. I don't know how or what the topics will be, but... Yeah, we'll uh, we'll do a UFC fight card. <laughs> <laughs> I think people will actually will fight each other. Yeah, Who do we think we'll... Mark Wahlberg and Tom Hardy. I'll I'll oh, see that, dude. That I see that fight. That would be wild. That would be wild, <laughs> dude. Who Tom Cruise and like somebody else who's like almost sixty, Uh like and legit, like and legit. Yeah, I mean. Well, no, okay. I I went too old. My mind went Harrison Ford, but I, that's yeah, that's too, too old. old. He's a little too old. Um, who could who could Tom Cruise fight? <laughs> what a great question. It's like a legit match, though. Uh yeah, like a legit. Hmm. Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig might be able to keep up with him. Man. I feel like he could keep up. James Bond and Ethan Hunt. Yeah, I yeah. think they could. I think they could go toe to toe. Yeah, it'd be a fun fight. It'd be a fun fight. Yeah. Who do you think? Oh, ja- I mean, well, Jackie Chan. If he's still in the mix. Okay. Gloves off. Well, Jackie Chan would inadvertently kill everybody. <laughs> okay. Because that's how he fights. Like his whole movies, he's just like, I don't want to do this. And then he just like fucks four guys up. <laughs> it's the best. So you can't pick Jackie Chan. Yeah. Jackie Chan's off. Yeah. That's like, uh, you know. Yeah. That's that's illegal. Let's settle the age old debate. Gloves off. Or yeah. No, no not gloves off. Uh, six months to train. Yeah. Will Smith. Chris Rock. Boxing match. And Chris is on steroids, by the way. Chris is on steroids. Okay. <laughs> who, do you, who do you got? Huh. I mean, 
I still would probably have to go with Will Smith. Like, no grappling. It's a straight... No, I know, but also you forgot that Will Smith was Muhammad Ali. Ali. He was Ali. And trained. Like, I think he's... I think he's kept that up. Okay. No, yeah, yeah, obviously. But they're about the... They're both the same age or is Chris Rock a little bit older? Uh, I think I think Chris is a couple years older, but they're both relatively the same age because they were both hot around. They're the same, the same time. age, yeah, yeah. But I think I think Will Smith is like 20, 30 pounds over on on Chris Rock oh, for sure, especially like muscle wise too. Yeah, that's like, what I'm saying. Yeah. So yeah, I, I still think I still think Will would. Yeah. I think Chris would definitely get his shots in. Yeah. That would be and fun. would probably at the end of a round like hit hit him below the belt, you know, just for the slap. <laughs> um, but uh. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think Chris would surprise people. <laughs> I think so too. Yeah, I would like. To, I would, <laughs> dude. If they ever did that, <laughs> it would have to go down like that. First off, it would be the end of their careers. <laughs> yeah, they would both. It would be, be the end of boxing. <laughs> yeah, like it would. There would be too many. There would be too many lives and businesses that I think would tank from that. Would it be the highest grossing pay per view <laughs> of all time? Absolutely. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You could put it on ABC, they dude. You know what they do. should do. You know that? Have you seen that? Um, have you seen that slap thing? No. Where the guys just slap the shit out of each other? No. You haven't seen this? No. What is the slap thing? Okay. So basically, these two guys. Well, it's. Uh, I think women do can do it too. Um, but basically, if you got hands. Yeah. If, basically, <laughs> if you're a person with hands, you can you can do this. Um, so Captain Hook is out of the equation, but. Uh, so no, but basically it's like you, it's a, a you go toe to toe and you stand behind like a table, like, you know, like you're going to fucking arm wrestle or some shit and you put your hands behind your back mm-hmm. and one person just like puts, lines their hand up, just like winds up and winds up Oh, and yeah. then just slaps the <laughs> shit out of you. That's a sport. It's a sport. The <laughs> UFC just bought it. Oh wow! Because I think it was like big in Russia. Oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah. It makes sense. Yeah, it sounds like the most Russian <laughs> shit ever. Um, but so yeah, so it's like a it's like a legit sport, and like people get knocked out, and yeah. like their faces swell up. Can you fucking imagine if Will Smith and Chris Rock went toe to toe in that, and Chris Rock gets the first slap? <laughs> like as. Like, like, like that's the payback event. Yeah, like that's the pay per view <laughs> event. Is that they do like a slap thing, and because Will slapped him, Chris gets the first slap, and Chris just like for months, Chris is just <laughs> practicing. <laughs> It'd be really funny if there was like a whole training montage of Chris of Chris Rock training, and then he slaps the shit out of Will Smith, and he gets Will Smith pretty good. And then Will Smith <laughs> slaps him once and knocks him the fuck out. Yeah, he just like falls back. Yeah. Like his shoes fly off. That would be like. <laughs> he turns into a stick figure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the fucking Rick James skip. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> dude, they would make a trillion dollars. <laughs> they would make so much money. So much money. That'd be the best event ever, dude. Yeah. If, oh man. Yeah. It's such. A, that's I the mean, best would it setup. be perpetuating black on black violence? It absolutely would be. <laughs> yeah. Which, which you know, no one really needs. But yo, if you would get niggas to like actually pay for a pay per view event, that would be the one. Pay for the pay per view, and and all the money goes to the Negro College Fund. Yeah. Or a charity like, they're choosing. Or you can watch it on BET for free. Yeah. <laughs> like if you got BET. You got BET Plus. Yeah, if you got BET Plus, you can watch it for free. <laughs> or TV One, you can watch it for free. Yeah. That shit would be fucking <laughs> Yo, um, that would be great. Oh, man. Dude, we got to get in touch with these guys. <laughs> we got to get in touch with these guys. So you guys dapped it up, right? <laughs> Y'all are good or, yeah. you, or not? <laughs> Which one is it? Yeah. Do you guys want to meet up beforehand, or do you want to just get right into it? Because we can really stir some shit up if you want to. We can make yeah. you it down. You have, Jade, you have Jada sit front row. Yeah. You know, <laughs> she could be the judge. Yeah, <laughs> she could. Oh, she could be the judge. Dude, that's a real curveball. That's a real curveball. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Steve Harvey hosts. <laughs> just because he's the best host. Yeah. The hell. <laughs> Chris Rock would just do, just for laughs, Chris Rock would do this for like five minutes straight. Like making different faces. 
Yeah. Get get more chalk on. <laughs> like, what would be best too is if they would like if they Yo, mic'd them up. Yo, is he gonna up. slap me? <laughs> if they mic them up. Oh and yeah, you oh, you'd have what to mic them up. Saying. Oh, you'd have to. And mic like, them up. it was just like full on. Y'all can say whatever you want. Like, oh, so many bad things. Oh, oh. wow, that was I need that was a good laugh. Yeah, dude, I needed that too. Uh, yeah, as did this episode. We appreciate everybody uh, tuning in. Yeah. For another episode of the Rat Beers. Um, if you like what you just heard and watched, follow. Yeah. I, like, I, subscribe, yeah, comment, de- share. Definitely. Um, we would love to hear your guys' top movie picks for us to watch on Netflix. Yes. Um, and before you guys share, I want Dylan to share with me how you strategize watching movies and TV. Um, like how I decide what I pick or how I decide how you that des- I'm going to I'm going to watch something right now that both of those so like how you decide like what you watch and like how you prioritize so, watching it and so, actually watching it yeah so I would say it just simply when it comes to movies like going to a movie theater is a priority of mine yeah like I want to go to the movies at least I I want to go at least like twice a month if I can. And so just whatever, if there's a movie that I want to see, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll find time. I'll look at my work schedule and I'll see, okay, can I see it? And on an evening during the week, uh, Saturday is my day off. Yeah. If anything, I'll go on Saturday and check it out. Um, so like, you know, I just saw challengers and I was like, I just feel like this is going to be like an event. Okay. And so I, this is a movie that I want to see. The weekend it comes out. But you like carve out time per week to watch a movie, either in theaters or Um, if I well, if I'm at home and I'm by myself, mm-hmm. then I'm I'll just watch a movie. Okay. But do you like per week, do you try to like go see a movie or like every other week? Do you try to like actually uh, go see I a movie? Ju- I mean, in a perfect world I'm see- I'm going to the theater at least once a week. Okay. Um, in all honesty, just because of life and everything, I'm probably going every other week. But you go every other week, so twice a month, you would say. Like I go then. at le- I go at least twice a month. Okay. Yeah. Um. And in terms of what I see, it's just whatever whatever the movie is that I would want to see, and in combination with what I think a, a big movie is gonna like, whatever popular movie I think people are just gonna be talking about. Okay. Um, taking a look at my schedule and seeing, oh, can I see this during the week? Do I want to see this on the weekend? Is this something that Rachel would like to? That also factors in because, you know, I, I mean, I, I like I can go to the movies by myself, but if I can go and watch a movie with her, yeah, that, that would be preferable. Um, and yeah, and then when I'm home, honestly, that's when I get a little bit more experimental of like, oh, there's like a movie on Criter- on Criterion that uh, or like a collection of movies that like, you know, I want to m- make my way down. So if you got more of a library, you're kind of more keen to explore. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and then obviously you know if like, yeah, you know, and then it and then it kind of depends because I mean I also typically don't tend to watch the same movie twice. Mm-hmm. Um, I I do want to see I actually do intend on seeing Challengers again because um, I enjoyed it that much and um, so I might do that again. Um, but yeah, generally it's just like because because I'm always keeping tabs on like you know the trailers and like what movies people are talking about and I. You know, I listen to the big picture, and so like if they talk about a movie that I really like or that sounds interesting, I'll go check that out. I you know I take their recommendations to heart. Um, and then like shows, do you just like do that based off of like, uh, what's new? Yeah, or? yeah, kind of. Yeah, generally, what's new? Um, you know, I mean, me and Joe were definitely going on a big kick with like Shogun, and you know, we watched like Tokyo Vice. Like those were recommend. Uh, sh- well, Shogun we both kind of wanted to watch, and Tokyo Vice was one that he recommended, and so I, we watched that together. Mm. Um, yeah, just kind of whatever I think the whatever I, th- you know, you kind of get a sense of like whatever the new show that everyone's talking about is. Mm-hmm. Um, there's you know, I don't watch you know, there's shows that I like that are still running, like, but that I have kind of fallen off on like mm-hmm. admittedly I haven't watched the last season of Curb but I do want to watch it because I love that show and I heard great things about the finale mm-hmm. um, and in terms of making time to watch it um, you know I have an hour lunch break and so if it's a half hour comedy show that I like I'll squeeze in two episodes or an episode and um, you know 
like Baby Reindeer, for example, like that's a very classic binge worthy Netflix show. And so, you know, I've sat down and watched two episodes at a time. Um, okay. And, you know, like, as, as as I'm sure you know and other people know, like, when you're watching a show with your significant other, like, if you, it's kind of hard to, when you're not together, to, like, watch something because you want to watch the next thing, but right. you don't want to watch it without them. So I even texted Rachel. I was like, hey, I'm going to watch, like, two more episodes of Baby Reindeer just because, like. Oh, let's I, consider it. I, I don't I do need, that. Yeah, I'm, I'm so No, I don't think that. anyone does that. Yeah, I'm so um, But. I also made this, I also told her, I was like, I'll watch, you know, I'll watch these two episodes. I'll tell you what I stopped at. And that way you can either watch it or if we, if, if you want to watch it, I'll just watch the episodes over. Um, as I mentioned, episode four was very upsetting. So I don't know if I want to watch that again necessarily, but I, I, I'll be willing to. Um, things we do for love. Things we do for love. Um, but mainly, I mean, it's just, you know, watching film and watching good TV like that's a priority for me because it's just it's an interest of mine and because also I do a film and TV podcast and so I want to have stuff to talk about that <laughs> right. people are going to be you know people are going to want to chime in and hear what we have to say or what I have to say and so um you know I just treat it as any other priority that someone would have with like you know diet and exercise or you know spending time with your family or friends or whatever it's just for me it's something that brings me fulfillment and something that I enjoy, and so I, I make a priority to to make time for it. I love that explanation, dude. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate you sharing it with me and all of our listening audience, and hopefully, you inspire people to watch more stuff because you definitely have inspired me. Um, well, thank you. And with that being said, <clears throat> and go see movies in theaters. Yes, definitely go see movies in theaters, and we want you guys to send us your recommendation for a movie on Netflix that we should watch, put it in the comments, DM us, uh, email us, our shit's listed in our freaking website, link tree, whatever's on our web or on our bio and social content platforms, whatever the fuck. Follow us. Hit the subscribe button on YouTube. Go to our fucking bio. Yeah. Send us your recommendation for what movie you want us to watch on Netflix. We'll watch it. We'll talk about it in our next episode. And or no, we'll pick one. We'll pick one. Sorry. Yeah, we'll pick one from the from the recommendations. But Dylan's picking them because you get the first pick here. Okay. Given your brilliant explanation as to how you choose and strategize to watch movie and TV, I'm gonna leave this up to you, buddy. All right. You must Thank impress you. him. It's him you must impress. This man. It's not that hard. <laughs> yeah. As just making you, as long as you have a good taste. Yeah. yeah that's that's it. all I ask. Uh, and with with that, that's all I got. That's it. It's a wrap. Bing bong.